Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Ran, and today I am going to talk about the new release, Livia's House. I have the information here to read off. Inspired by true events, Livia's House follows a young journalist who, after moving into a new home with her new lover, begins an investigation into the disappearance of an Italian artist, who is Livia, with links to murders that happened 20 years ago. So... This film had a successful festival run with screenings at Toronto International Women Film Festival where the film took home Best Female Scriptwriter, Nevada's Film Festival, and Horror Fest International. Stonecutter Media will release the film exclusively on Voodoo slash Fandango at home and local cable and satellite providers on October 1st with additional platforms including iTunes, Apple TV, Amazon Prime Video and Google Play to follow October 15th. So, as I said, the film does center around this Italian artist, Livia's home, and it was uh, left to Johnny, who is uh, the boyfriend of our main character, Tara, and he invites her to stay in the home with him as Livia had to unexpectedly go back to Italy for some sort of project so she would be there for a prolonged period of time. I don't recall if he was just given the home or if she's like, hey, if you want to stay here, that's great. But he decided to invite Tara, you know, to stay along with him. He does uh, bring this up kind of early into their relationship, which we meet Tara's best friend, Helen, who also works with her kind of sets off a red flag like hey uh do you really really know this guy because you know they're they're in the honeymoon phase they're still really really early into everything but Tara does you know keep reiterating that she loves Johnny and you know this is just a new new experience new opportunities uh, as they're in the house Tara starts to realize you know maybe this this isn't the best because for one there's no wi-fi as she is a journalist she does have deadlines that she has to meet and in this day and age hey could you not hey sir that's r-rated uh she would need to submit her articles through the internet and uh without wi-fi how's that really possible so she starts to have some strange feelings about the home itself and also the others in the community. There's just, you know, very small town vibes and she has a weird encounter with one of the guys and makes her feel a little bit unsafe. We do meet uh, a character named Georgie, who we find out was very, very close with Livia as he seems like he's a very creative person as well as she is. They kind of had that bond and he felt safe with her. He seems a bit lost since she's not there, so he does come back to the property pretty frequently, which I, I get, but also it's not super cool for uh, Johnny and Tara that are there when he's peeping in their windows, so that uh, starts a, a whole uh, shitstorm. And Tara just starts to notice things that seem off. Uh, she might be hallucinating vermin. Um, she keeps bringing her concerns to Johnny, who kind of dismisses them. And I, I understand everyone has separate lives, too. But, you know, him being so tied up with work as an architect and being so tired doesn't really make up for the fact that she can't do her work or communicate with anyone if... Uh, he's not calling the Wi-Fi guy back. So there's, there's layers and layers to this. And I felt like the atmosphere was really tense. Uh, it is a slow burn. It's a longer movie. It was over two hours, I believe, which sometimes I struggle with a slow burn just because I have such a short attention span and I want things to just keep happening and happening. We did get glimpses of that in um, what could be dream sequences, what could not be that did keep you engaged. Um, it is like a, a, a true crime paranormal kind of vibe to it. And I feel like that was definitely expressed more so towards the end. Um, I do like that they really did flesh out Tara's character that she's not like a damsel in distress at all. She's, 
you know, taking the steps to try to figure out everything on her own so she can build a case because she is a journalist. That is what she does, you know, piecing things together. I liked that Helen's character was so realistic and basically saying everything that, you know, we as the audience would be saying, like, girl, d did you think about this? Did you really think it through? Maybe you should get out of there, you know. Is screw whatever thing you're trying to build here. You need to think of your personal safety, um, which, you know, that that's, that's real life. I like that. Um, at the end in particular, there's several moments where you're like, holy crap. Also, ew, a lot of ew. And then holy crap, like what, like how and why, why? But I, I did love the direction that it took. It was wonderful. Uh, this movie is not at all gory. You know, there's some blood here and there, but it's not uh, the, the usual fare that I, I look for, which is fine. But, you know, if you're more into like a thriller mystery with some paranormal and horror elements, this would probably be your bag. Uh, if you're looking for like a, like a straight up gore fest, like this is not it, but maybe if you are dipping your toes into horror movies and you do really like psychological thrillers, this would be a really great option. Um, what did I like about this movie? Uh, the, the way it was shot was gorgeous. I love the, the use of color, particularly there's like a green blue theme and then red which, you know, did make me feel unsettled. I really liked that. It made me think of like the, the old Italian horror filmmakers, which that's, that's always lovely to see and just beautiful to watch. I thought that the actors were wonderful. I, I really did, uh, get like, I, I built like a lot of compassion for them. I got really into their characters. Um, I thought that you know, it was more realistic than not. I feel like a lot of people, this is how you would react, which is nice because you're not like, well, this is ridiculous. This is a film, you know, when you get like really into it and you're like, well, you know, what next? Like I would do this. And then they do that and you're like, oh, okay. Pleasant. Um, what did I not like about this film? I, I would say, you know, the pacing for me was a bit tough. Uh, that's, that's a personal preference. I feel like maybe they could have condensed a bit, maybe taken like 30 minutes out of it, but you know, to fully flesh out their storytelling, if they're going to keep everything in, that's, that's totally, you know, just how they work. And I do respect that. Uh, what would I rate this movie? I would probably give this like a uh, 3.5 out of five. Like I said, not normally the kind of movie that I would gravitate to, but I had a really, really good time watching it. And I did really genuinely enjoy it. And, uh, I do kind of wish that they would have like, you know, they gave us a little taste of like a little bit of a paranormal in the end of it. I wish that that would have been a bit stronger just throughout the movie because, for my taste in particular, that would have really like hit the spot for me, but I had a great time watching it. Um, as I said earlier, you know where to find it. It'll be released October 1st. Um, have you seen the trailer for this movie? We, you know, we will have a link to that down below. Um, uh, have you heard of any other films that have been in these festivals. I'd love to know. I love anything that's created by women, obviously. Big supporter of that. Girl power. Uh, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you. You can hit the like button below. You can follow if you'd like to. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Reanimator. You can also find my reviews and podcast forum on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators and content as well. And I may have to break up another cat fight soon. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.